Hi everyone. Right, in this video, what I wanted to do was spend a bit of time just going through the BTEC assignment briefs so you are aware of how to understand them. Because obviously, if you're just looking at these as a, as a random document, there is a lot of text on there that can be a little bit tricky to get your head around. So what I thought I'd do is I'd just make this quick video just to make it easy for you to understand how to decipher your assignment brief because obviously you'll get one of these for every single assignment you do so it's really important that you understand what the point of an assignment brief is okay now um, for this video I'm going to be going over two documents the first one is the assignment brief structure itself and I will also be going through the um, specifications for the units that you will be doing for your BTEC course as well. I'm only going to go through one, you know, because they're all pretty much the same, but that'll give you an idea of what the purpose of these things is. Because in my experience in doing BTEC for a couple of years now, what I've noticed is that no one really uses these and they're really, really useful to tell you exactly what you need to do to get whatever grade it is you're going to be aiming for. Okay? So, you're going to get an assignment brief for every single assignment that you do in the entire beta media course okay so for the first year i can't remember how many it is off the top of my head to be honest uh you'll get one for each one essentially okay now <clears throat> all the information that you need for the um assignment is going to be on this document okay it is a lot of text okay but a lot of it is repeat is repeated so i can um you know go through it make it through make it easier for you so zoom in a little bit <clears throat> so the first thing you'll see at the top is this first little box or table here and this is basically an overview of the um, assignment as a whole so the first thing you see this bit here is the qualification that's just what course you're working towards and then this one here is what specific unit you are working towards so this one here i'm using assignment two just because it's the one that i've got open for me right now uh, is going towards unit 26 and actually that also should say unit 22 interview techniques as well never mind Okay, <clears throat> so you know that this assignment is going towards these two units, okay? There's a little bit for unit 26 and a little bit for unit 22, okay? It also tells you what learning a what specific learning aims you're going to be working towards. So, you don't need to worry about this text in italics here, but you just need to know that this assignment is going towards learning aim B and learning aim C. And that will become a bit more clear when I show you the unit specification next. Uh, and it tells you a little bit about that learning aim and what you need to do for that learning aim. Uh, assignment title is obviously the assignment title. The assessor is me, who's marking it. Um, and then you've got two key dates there. The first one is very important. This one means when are you going to be given this assignment. Okay, so it says here 21st September 2020. And the last one, which is probably even more important, when is it due? Now with BTEC, deadlines they are very very important if you miss a deadline for any of your assignments you basically forfeit your chance for a resubmission of that particular assignment okay and that means the grade you get if you hand it in late is the grade you get and you can't go back and resubmit and improve it and try and push up to a higher grade so say for example you were to hand in this piece of work on the 25th of December why you'd hand in a piece of work on Christmas Day, I don't know. Um, then, and I mark it, and you get, I don't know, a pass grade. That means you can't improve that pass grade because you missed the deadline, okay? Because you forfeit your resubmission opportunity. However, if you meet the deadline and you do get a pass, you then get the opportunity to look at the feedback that, that you've been given for your first assessment and then try and improve it to push you up to a higher grade, okay? Right. <clears throat> We've also got this vocational scenario or context okay now this is going to be different for every single assignment that you get so i'm not going to bother reading through this because it's all different okay but every assignment you do is going to be put in some sort of vocational scenario because don't forget this is a vocational course you're doing so we want to make it feel like a real working brief 
okay? The kind of thing that you would be expected to do if you were working in the actual industry itself. So all this is here is just a scenario that you're working towards. So it's a very, very vague overview, okay, of the assignment. It doesn't go into that much detail, but it's it's putting it into real world, real world context. Okay, <clears throat> so what you will get, obviously some assignments will look a little bit different depending on what it actually is you've got to do. Okay, now I've tried to make mine as simple to understand as possible, but how I normally do it is that I break it down into different sections, okay, different chapters in a way. So, what you will then see is this first chapter here. Now, this first chapter here, it tells you specifically what you need to do. Okay, so you've got the tasks here, the tasks, individual pieces of research you've got to do with this article essentially. And this is just the instructions here. Okay, so again, I'm not going to bother going through all these now because they'll be different for each assignment. But this bit here is the instructions. Okay, and the checklist of evidence is basically what do you need to submit. Okay, so for this one here, it says the checklist of evidence required is all completed research, clearly stored and labeled correctly. That's what I'm expecting you to hand in. Okay, which is all this. All right. Now, this is the bit that can confuse people. So, underneath it, you've got this bit where it says criteria covered by this task. Now, what this is, if, you, if we go on to the unit spec, which is this one here, <clears throat> this basically tells you everything about the unit, the unit that we are doing. It's got introduction to it, it's got the aims there, which is what you need to do, and then it's got, in more detail, the different learning aims. Okay, so you've got all these things here. Okay, again, I'm not going to read them out because they're all different. And essentially, what you need to make sure you can do is you need to make sure that you can meet all of these different learning aims. Okay, now that is what this bit is about here. Okay, <clears throat> again, scroll down a bit more, it tells you there in a bit more detail. Okay, all there. Now all this bit is saying here is which of these specific aims are you working towards? So it says here, you are working towards unit 26, P3, P4, M2, and D2. So if you go back onto the unit spec here, you can see that you are working towards these things here, okay? The assessment criteria, okay? This is what you need to do to get the grade it is you need to do. So again, it says here, P3, P4, M2, and D2. So you know this particular task is working towards, I forgot what it was now, P3, which is this one here, P4, M2, and D2. Basically, learning aim B. Okay? <clears throat> so, that's basically it for each individual task. So, you've got a very brief summary of the task. This will, we will go through this in more detail in class, okay? Some of this might be quite vague, but we'll do this in class as well. The checklist of the evidence required is what you're going to hand in, and then what specific criteria, <clears throat> which is here, are you working towards? All right, tells you all that there. Right, so all this stuff is the same. So I'm going to skip through this bit for now. What I've also put on your briefs as well is this bit of information here is how your work is marked by the assessor. Okay, this is all on the unit criteria, so it, on the unit specifications, so it's nothing that you don't have access to already. But what I've done is it makes it a bit easier. So it pretty much just tells you what will you, what do you need to do to get distinction, what do you need to do to get a merit, and what do you need to do to get a pass. Okay, obviously I think everyone should be aiming for a minimum of merit. But what I've done is I've taken this text here and put it on here as well. So it says here, for learning A and B, a pass standard this is what a past standard student will do, okay? And I've highlighted in yellow the bits that I think are more most important, okay? So that's what a past student will do. That's what a merit student will do. And this is what a distinction student will do, okay? It tells you all the information there. You've got the same one for learning aim C as well, okay? Um, anything else needs to go through with you guys? No, nope, that's pretty much it. So that is pretty much it for your assignment briefs so realistically you can break down to three sections the first section is an overview of the entire assignment it's got the learning aims you're working towards it's got the assessor it's got the dates 
and it's got an overview of the entire so uh, vocational context there okay then you've got the individual sections of the assignment okay so you can see with this one being your journalism portfolio I've broken it down into four different sections. Article 1, well, eight sections technically. Article 1, planning and research. Article 1, writing. Article 2, planning and research. Article 2, writing. Article 3, planning and research. Article 3, writing. And Article 4, planning and research. And Article 4, writing. Okay. And then finally, you've got understanding the assessment criteria at the bottom there. Okay. Oh, there's this bit here as well I forgot to go through. Um, what I might do in some assignment briefs, probably more likely to be the report based ones, is we'll provide you with resources that might be of use to you. And you can find all these in this section here. Okay. Most of them, though, to keep it easy, I'll probably dump them on OneDrive and dump them on Moodle. And I'll put a link to the OneDrive and Moodle page in there as well. Okay. But they will be on more specific um, report based assignments, essentially. Okay. Uh, so that's pretty much it really for your assignment brief um you've got the unit spec as well that i've sort of gone through okay it's a little bit more text heavy but the 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 information is probably pretty much the same okay you've got introduction to the unit but i think the ones that's most important to you really is this bit here because this specifically tells you what you need to do to get the certain grade okay so you can see there there's a difference between you know examine style and format of text analyze style and format from different media sectors and evaluate so there's a clear different differentiation of levels there so that's really important it tells you how to get merit and distinction grades and then this section here is the assessment decisions okay so this is pretty much what i'm going to be looking for when i'm marking your work so there's no reason why you can't use this to your advantage you can say right i know he's going to be looking for distinction grade stuff so i'm going to give him some distinction grade stuff okay um so use that to your advantage people don't use these enough okay which is really frustrating because it's there for you to use okay it's not hard to find i will put this on in the onedrive folder in um on moodle as well okay so it's all there for you to use um but that's pretty much it okay if you've got any other questions about the assignment brief, you don't understand it, just give me a shout and I'll go through it with you.